Hello there everyone, Matt here with the virtualinstructor.com and in this video we're going to take a look at pastel matte paper. This is a product made by Claire Fontaine. It is a relatively new pastel surface. It's been around for about five or six years or so and uh, in this video I'm going to be sharing with you my very first impressions of using this surface and we're going to take a look at the pros and cons along the way and we'll finish things up with a quick demo where I'll take you through the entire process of drawing a quick little sketch with pastels on this wonderful surface. So let's go ahead and dive right in. All right, now here's a look at a pad of pastel matte paper. This particular pad that I have indicates on the front that it's 170 pound paper. So the paper is very, very thick, uh, which is going to make it perfect. It's going to make it a perfect support for applying pastel applications. Of course, it's going to be rigid. And uh, we can see here that in this particular pad, I've got four different colors here. We've got uh, the buttercup, the maize color, and the dark gray and the light gray. You can see the buttercup is a little bit more of a uh, warmer yellow, somewhat like a yellow ochre. The maize color is pretty similar to a cream. The dark gray looks like to be a warmer gray, and then the light gray also looks to be a warmer light gray. Um, we can see here that it's made by Claire Fontaine, and of course we always want to make sure that the paper that we use is going to be acid free and we can see here that the paper is acid free. When we open up the pad we can see here that we have uh, a cover sheet which is a really nice touch here for each one of the sheets of paper within the pad we have a waxy cover sheet that goes right on the top of it. And what's really nice about this, of course, is when you're done with the artwork, you can use this cover sheet uh, to cover up your art. I get so many questions about how to store your pastel drawings, and um, this is a perfect way to store them, of course, with a cover sheet. So here's a look at the butter buttercup surface, and you can see it's uh, a very yellow surface. It's uh, a yellow ochre. I would say it's pretty close to being yellow ochre. But the paper is surprisingly smooth to the touch. I, I guess... Um, it's hard to describe how it feels other than smooth. It has a little bit of a texture associated with it. It feels almost like a very, very fine sandpaper surface here, uh, but it feels very smooth to the touch. Now, the back side of the paper here is not another surface suitable for drawing on. You can see here that it is almost like a, a cardboard. It's, it reminds me of poster board. Um, it feels like it has kind of a waxy um, surface to it. So we're only going to be drawing on one side with this paper, but you can see how rigid it is and how heavy the paper is. It, it really is able to support itself very nicely. Here's a look at the uh, maize color, and this is most closely related, I would say, to a cream color. Let's have a look at the uh, gray. Here's a dark gray surface. You can see it's a very rich dark gray. And then here's a look at light gray here. Um, it may almost look white on the camera, but it is a very, very light gray. Just some beautiful colors here to work on. All right, next, let's take a look at how pastel behaves on the surface, and then we'll move on to a short demonstration. All right, we're going to look at basically three different aspects of the paper here real quickly. The first thing I want to test is how much, uh, how easy it is actually to layer the pastels on the surface. So I'm just going to start here with a darker red and I'm just going to create a small little square right here. And then we'll just start layering some colors on the surface. We'll start with this dark red and you can see immediately that uh, the color is easily spread over the surface. I'm not getting a whole lot of resistance. Perhaps you can hear a little bit. Uh, there is the tooth is interacting with the paper a little bit, but you can also see how little pastel dust comes up as a result of making this little swatch here. Now let's layer a little bit of blue over the top and see how rich the blue is as we layer it over the top of the red. And you can see it covers extremely well. I'm putting a medium to heavy pressure here. If we wanted to cover that red completely with the blue, we could do so. All right, let's choose another color to go on top. Let's choose a yellow green and see what happens here. 
And you can see with the yellow green, look at how well that covers. That is really covering extremely well. I mean, you may have noticed on some papers when you apply pastel over the top of other areas where you've already applied the pastel, sometimes it's difficult to cover the applications. And with this paper, that doesn't look like that's going to be a problem at all. And even though this is only three layers, I can really see that even though the tooth feels relatively weak, it's going to be able to handle multiple applications, which is what we would should be looking for in a pastel surface anyway. Now let's give it a real test and let's apply a bit of white over the top and see how brilliant and bright the white is. And I think that pretty much speaks for itself. You can see how strong these, these lines are, how visible they are, and they're just effortly put on here. I'm really impressed with this paper so far. All right, the next thing we're going to test here is the blendability of the pastels on the surface. Of course, we want to be able to, in some cases, use our finger to smudge and move the pastel around on the surface. But you also want to be able to do that with a level of control. So let's go ahead and give it a quick test. We're going to try to create uh, a transition from blue to red, and we'll have a little bit of purple in between, and we'll see what happens. So we'll just start here with this primary blue. And look at how bright it is on the surface. And then we'll just let it fade down here. We'll use a warmer red for this and we'll just do the same thing on the bottom and work our way to the top. See if we can't create a warmer purple in between. And just by layering the colors on top of each other we're getting kind of a little bit of a transition there. We're seeing a little bit of the purple showing through there, just naturally with a little bit of optical color mixing. All right, now let's do a little bit of blending with our finger. Let's see if we can't create a smoother transition. And it's a little bit difficult to, to blend and move the pastel around on the surface, but that may be something that you want. Let's see here, I'm putting quite a bit of pressure on my finger to try to blend those transitions. Let's add a little bit more pastel over the top. So it looks like it's gonna, you're going to have quite a bit of control over the blending here if you like to blend with your fingers. Go back and smooth that transition. That's a little bit nicer. Go vertically. They're not too bad. We do have, like I mentioned before, a high level of control over the blending. It doesn't feel like the pastel is wanting to fly all over the place. It actually feels like it's wanting to stay in place, but you can see with a little bit of blending and with a little bit of vigorous blending with my finger, we're able to create a smooth transition from blue to red with a little bit of purple in between. All right, next we're going to take a look at how water interacts with the pastel on the surface. Since this paper is a little bit more rigid and a little bit heavier, um, I feel like it's going to really perform well with a bit of water. Of course, we can add a bit of water to the pastel and thin it out and create some more painterly effects. Uh, so let's go ahead and grab a couple of colors and we'll just do some blending with the water. We'll start here with a bit of yellow green. And let's add a little bit of a darker yellow green. Maybe a medium yellow green. And maybe a really light yellow green down here. And we'll grab a little bit of water with a brush. And activate that pastel right there on the surface. All right, so we'll let that dry up, and then once it's dry, we'll go back over the top of it with some pastel applications. So after we've allowed this area to dry completely, about 10 minutes or 15 minutes or so, we can see that the paper is wrinkling very little. There's not much of an effect on the paper, even though I loaded a lot of water on the surface. That's definitely a good feature. Now let's layer some colors over the top. We'll start here with a little bit of pink. And you can see that covers really nicely right over the top of the green with no problem. A little bit more of a brighter pink here. And maybe a little bit of blue. Let's 
So you can see with each one of these tests, we've got some really nice layering that happens here. We can see that we've got nice control over the blending, but we're able to still create a smooth transition uh, from one color to the next. And we can even add quite a bit of water to the surface after we've applied pastels to create more of a painterly effect. And it really doesn't affect the subsequent layered applications that we put on top. Okay, so we're going to take a look at how pastel matte paper behaves. I'm going to do a loose sketch of an apple. And for whatever reason, I love drawing apples when I'm testing out new products or products that are new to me anyway, whether they be uh, colored pencils, uh, pastels, whatever they may be. And in this case, this, this surface is brand new to me, pastel matte. I know it's been around for a little bit of time, but it's still relatively kind of new. Um, so uh, I've had a couple of questions about it, and I'm excited to dive in take a look and see how it behaves and we're going to draw an apple so let's go ahead and get started I'm just going to grab a red here and I'm going to start by just making the basic shape of the apple and uh, this is going to be my first impressions of the uh, the surface and how it behaves and I'm going to try to keep this drawing pretty nice and loose here and I'm going to start with light, loose marks here, just trying to get the basic shape of the apple in place. We'll, we'll let it be kind of larger here. And immediately you can see, hopefully you can see how just soft and buttery the marks are. Um, they definitely feel buttery as I'm making these marks. They feel nice and soft and very controlled. The paper surface feels very velvety. Um, it's got a nice, nice feel to it. It, it feels almost like I'm making brush strokes with the pastels, which that is, you know, that's a lot of times that's kind of what we're doing here with pastels anyway, um, where you are kind of creating somewhat of a painting here. A lot of times pastel images are referred to as paintings, even though the process is applying a dry medium to a dry surface, but the end result is very similar to a painting, so a lot of times it gets called a painting process. Now you can see here I'm keeping things relatively loose, and this, this red I'm adding here is pretty electric, but we're going to just add a series of colors to the surface and slowly bring things to a more representational um, color, but you can see how much it's popping off of that gray background. So let's go ahead and define some of uh, the lighter yellow greens that are going to be in place. I'm just going to start with this really light yellow green. This is going to feel very electric too, but we're just going to go ahead and put down some of the colors here initially, and then we'll start working, working them darker and lighter. You can see the beautiful strokes and marks that we get here with this paper already. It's nice and buttery. I can't think of a better term to call it other than butter, buttery at this point, but as we go through the process, I'm sure I'll come up with more creative words to use other than buttery. <laughs> but it is just really, you have a real sense of control here. And another thing that I'm noticing here with this paper um, right off the bat is there's not a lot of pastel dust that's coming off the surface. You know, we've, we're putting these marks on using the side of the pastel, and there's just not a whole lot of it flying off. In fact, if I even go down there and blow it a little bit, there's really not much of an effect. There's really not much of a change that happens there, which is going to be really nice for some folks. They're going to really like that. All right, let's go to a little bit of a deeper, darker uh, red here. And I'm using Rembrandt pastels for this drawing. These are my favorites, but you know, everybody has their favorites and the ones that they like. And and not everybody's going to enjoy this type. These types of pastels are a little bit. Uh, they're a little bit pricey. And, and speaking of pricey, this paper is a bit pricey as well. But we're going to see how much it's worth <laughs> or how much, uh, how much uh, it's going to help your drawing with pastels if you haven't had a chance to use it yet. But uh, the colors are, are really layering nicely here. I'm able to put this color right on top, and I just it just really feels like painting, uh, more so than more so than working on the surface that I normally work on. And normally when I'm creating a pastel image, I like to work on Kansen Mitant's pastel paper. It has, that paper has two different surfaces 
obviously. <laughs> but uh, one surface has a heavier tooth or texture associated with it, and another side of the paper has a little bit of a smoother surface. And uh, this paper, of course, only has one workable side. Um, it is like a mat. It is, just as the name implies, it is a mat. You have one side to work on. All right, so I'm, there's lots of details in the reference that I'm working from. There's a little bit of a graininess that happens here and there. There's, of course, texture that happens on the apple, which is what we would expect to happen on an apple. But since this is a kind of a looser drawing, more so of a painting, I'm going to leave some of those details out. Now let's go ahead and uh, start adding some darker tones. And I'm actually going to use a little bit of a purple for this. Um, we'll see how that works. We use a little bit of purple. We use some greens in some areas. I'm just going to bring down that purple in some of the areas where the reds are getting a little bit darker. And our light source is originating from the upper left-hand corner. And this is going to produce some highlights right up here on this portion of the apple. Just subtle ones, but a real strong highlight right here. And kind of a secondary highlight right there as well. So we'll go ahead and start pushing some of these darker tones with this purple. And this purple is just going to add a little bit of punch, a little bit of life here a little bit of color and that's what we're after here so we're not copying the the photo reference exactly of course we'll bring some of that purple over here we're going to allow our reference to be a reference and we're going to use it to basically evaluate the values and give us some hints of information about the color so again even with a few different colors on the surface it still is not very powdery. It's pretty cool. All right, let's go ahead and start doing some of the darker um, yellows and things that happen down there. I said I was going to use a little bit of green. Let's start with this kind of brownish green color down here. This will give us some darker values, but stay within that color family that we're after. And you can see I'm not really getting overly detailed with the colors that I'm adding here. We're going to keep this loose. And you can see I'm letting my marks go outside of the range or the outside of the outer contours of the apple. We'll clean all that stuff up when we add the background color. So for right now, we can just let those those things happen. And you can see here, um, I'm, I'm able to layer the colors really, really easily here uh, on the matte paper, which you can do with the Canson paper as well, but with every paper, there is a, there's a limit. There's a point where you, you have to stop and you can't really layer any more. And we're gonna see, we're gonna see if we reach that point with this particular drawing and just see how many layers that we can get away with. Um, let's see here. Let's start adding a little bit of a lighter green down here. This is another yellow green, a little bit lighter, and that will contrast with uh, some of the reds, of course. And as we add these colors, uh, slowly the apple will start to, to pop out here and hopefully we'll create something that's pretty pleasing to look at. That's apps, That's the whole point, right? And I'm just grabbing colors and putting them on there as I go. Don't need to overthink things too much. Let's uh, switch over to this one. This, I think we've already applied this in areas. Uh, yeah, let's see. This is kind of a deeper red. We haven't used this one quite yet, but... A little bit of a darker red. We'll add some some of those darker tones that we need. Go right along the top edge here. Over here, we've got some really rich dark tones. We might have to incorporate some browns over here. We'll see. Just you can see how painterly this is looking already. I really already my first impressions here is that this paper is going to be really suited for kind of a painterly approach. So if you uh, if you like to have a lot of control over your pastels, I think this paper is going to give you a lot of control. But it definitely feels. This is a dark dark brown here. This looks like it's a black, but it's not. Um, this paper definitely 
is going to give you that control, but it also is really nice for creating that painterly feel in a pastel image, which that is what some people are looking for. And I can't tell you how much this feels like I'm painting. All right, so I'm going to take my finger and do just a little bit of loose smudging here. And you can see um, the, the paper is kind of allowing the smudging to be very, very smooth. I feel like I have a whole lot of control over it. I don't feel like I'm necessarily moving the pastel over the surface. Instead, it feels like I'm kind of I'm blending the pastel, <laughs> just like you would want to happen. Um, you know, sometimes when we're when we use our fingers to smudge uh, pastel colors in place, sometimes it can make things a little bit messy, and that's why sometimes we need to switch fingers. <laughs> to keep it a little bit clean, but sometimes it just things get way out of control there when we start blending and, and moving colors around. And I don't feel like in this particular case, things are getting out of control. It still feels like I have quite a bit of control as I'm uh, blending things around there. All right, so let's go ahead and let's add just a little bit more yellow green here. Let's um, add a little bit of yellow green on this side here. This might be too strong. We'll see what happens. That's a little too strong. Let's work that in real quick. Just a little bit too bright. Um, and let's go a little bit more subdued here. Let's try this color. Yeah, that's a little bit more like it. And again, I don't want to get too carried away with too many colors and start trying to pull in too many details. Things to stay loose and painterly. Let's add a little bit of pink up there. Just working quickly here. I mean, this is where we've got that stronger highlight happening. So put a little bit of that pink down. Kind of work it in there. And we've got kind of a little bit of a lighter tone that happens right here too. Just quickly work that in. And then right across the top edge, we've got a little bit of a a little bit of a lighter tone. Just keeping it loose, giving it an impression. All right. Now let's start adding some of our bolder, stronger colors over the top. Let's, let's see, what red are we going to use for this? Um, let's just go back to the first red we started with. That was pretty strong, wasn't it? Might be a little bit too light. Now we're going to start just adding some colors right over the top. And in this case, we're going to allow these colors to just sit there. Kind of block in the colors. Some of these colors that we've already added, we're going to allow them to kind of be somewhat like an underpainting where they're blended. I'm just going to allow for some pops of color here and there. Trying our best to make sure that we don't overwork things too much. Let this be a, a painting. We're going to let it be loose. So it's sometimes real easy to get overworked with all the details that we see, isn't it? And a lot of times our viewer will fill in all the details for us when they look at it, so we don't have to get too carried away with things. All right, let's, uh, let's make this yellow-green a little bit brighter here. Let's see, what are we going to use for the pop of color? That color might be a little too strong. Let's try this one. So there's a little bit of a transition zone down here. We'll add some of this yellow green. And this color should pop nicely against that red. There we go, just a little bit of a transition. Most of our strokes are flowing along the cross contours of the form of the apple. So in other words, we're going to make bring strokes that come down on either side like that. Let's bring a little bit of that over here in the, on the side of shadow even. Just a little bit of that color. Oh, and it's just 
going back to it. The paper's so buttery. <laughs> I think it just makes the the pastel feel so buttery and soft when you put it on there. Like like you're painting with it. And you can see the effects that are produced are definitely very painterly. All right, let's add a little bit uh, more color here. Where can we put a little bit more color? Let's bring a little bit more purple in. Let's try this dark purple. Just put a little bit of it over here. Shadowed side, just a little bit of color. There we go, just a little bit of color down here too. And a little bit over here too. And maybe up here where things are a little bit darker. I don't need to worry about the stem quite yet. Then we can tone that down a little bit with our original darker purple. That way you use kind of the red purple. We want a hint of it, but we don't want it to... We don't want it to overpower things too much. We want that purple to be a little bit more subtle. A little bit more pink up here. Before we add that highlight. Just getting ready for it. And where else do we need some of that pink? I think we already added some right there, but we need a little bit more of it. A little bit more of a shot of it. Just where the light's hitting the top part there. And maybe a little bit right here too. All right, now let's add that highlight right there. Now this is going to look like a white, but it's uh, really not. This is actually um, a little bit of a, a light yellow, believe it or not. Very light yellow. Just add that highlight right up there. Let it be loose. And then there's a subtle one right here in the middle. Make, make it a little bit lighter up here. A little bit lighter right there. And then let's go back and grab that. We'll grab a real light yellow green and uh, add a little punch of it up there at the top. Love the way those colors are bouncing off of each other right there. Got some good vibration going on there. Between those yellow greens, those reds, and those purples right there. All right, I feel like we need to have just a little bit more of a deeper green down here on the bottom. Yeah, and just a little bit more vibration. Again, keeping things nice, loose, painterly. All right, let's make that highlight a little bit stronger, this time with some actual white. Put that down nice and strong. Let's add our stem here before we go on. Start with that dark brown. Just pull up a stem here. Just make the shape. Then on the top, we'll start adding some lighter tones here. This is a, a light gray. Get that light hitting on the left side. Let's add a pop of color right underneath that. Maybe a maybe a little bit of blue. Just to give it a little bit of a just a little bit of color. Seems strange, doesn't it? A little bit of blue. A little bit of brown on top. We we'll create a more natural black. We'll let some of that we'll still let some of that blue show through there and uh, 
tone down some of those grays with that brown. There we go. And I feel like we need to make some of the, just a couple of the tones up here a little bit darker. So uh, let's see here. We want to use a warmer, dark color here. So let's see if we can find a warm, dark red. Yeah, that's going to work. So we're going to just start with that dark umber. And we'll go over the top of it with a little bit of red. And while we're at it, we'll make some of the shadows down here just a little bit darker. And I tell you what, I'm I'm really enjoying this paper. I think it's uh, I think it's helping me actually to loosen up a little bit and be a little bit more painterly with things. All right, now we'll go back over the top with that dark red, and we should get a darker a darker red up here because the colors are going to mix. And it should give us the color that we need. More specifically, the value that we need. There, just to make that area appear a little bit darker. Just beautiful what you can get when you when you layer pastels and when you're you're patient about it. I know it might not look like I'm being very patient here since I'm working quickly, but but we're just not expecting everything to happen at one time. That's what I mean about working patiently. We're th allowing things to happen slowly. Let's make that a little bit brighter. Right here, just a little bit more brighter. A little bit more contrast. And you can see how um, the shape of the apple right now, you know, it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. But don't let that bother you. In just a minute, we'll, we'll clean that up. Let's add a little bit more warmth to the red. We've got some of those... Uh, cooler reds in place. Let's add a little bit more of a, a little bit more of a punch here with a, a little bit of a red orange. We'll see how that works. If we don't like it, we'll cover it up. Just a little bit here and there. We're not going to go crazy with it. Look at that. You can blend so easily with this paper, so easily. Sometimes you're scared to go in there and touch things um, because you know you're going to blend too much. Sometimes if that happens, you're going to mess up some of the areas that you've already worked. But with this, it seems like you're, with this paper, it seems like you're able to get multiple layers um, pretty easily without, uh, in with blending, without being afraid that you're going to mess up what you've already got in place, which is a nice nice thing to have at your disposal. A little bit more of the original red that we used. And after we get this in place, we're going to go ahead and frame out the shape of the apple. And we'll see what we've got in place. And then we'll, we'll add a little bit of cast shadow. All right, let's frame out what we've got here. It might not look like we, uh, <laughs> we've got a really good defined shape of an apple. So as you can see, some of the purple has escaped out here. Uh, that's no worries because uh, we're gonna we're gonna put in just a kind of an off-white background. It might look white, but it's gonna be kind of a little bit of a tone or uh, a little bit of a lighter version of uh, of a color. We're gonna actually use a lighter version of of yellow here, and this is really gonna look like we're using white, uh, but it's not completely white. And if you did use white, it wouldn't be the end of the world. It's no big deal. So this is gonna be the point where we just frame everything out. And you can see here, you know, uh, we we're talking about the pastel matte paper here. And uh, I really think that you you could put a few more additional layers on here. You know, if we put a few layers on here and haven't come into any issues. And I think you really could just continue to pile the, the pastels on here. Of course, this is the first drawing that I've ever done using this this paper. And uh, it definitely is different than the papers that I've used before in the past. Um, and I think that it is a paper for a specific type of approach. 
And I think if you're going to approach things with a little bit more of a painterly approach, I think that you're going to love this paper. But I do think also that this paper is going to give you a level of control that you might not have experienced with uh, pastels before. Because look, I, I mean, I'm using a lot of pastel on the surface and there's dust there, but it's not that much. So you can imagine the, the level of control you have when you're applying the pastels. Just all, all kinds of control that you don't normally get. It, it feels like this paper tames the pastels to a certain degree. And if you've been having trouble taming your pastels, maybe this is a, a surface that you're going to want to, to try out at least. You can see how easily we can frame out the apple. And now that we've got some lighter value in place, we can contrast that with the values that we've got in place on the apple and kind of evaluate what we've got as a whole. For the most part, during this whole process, we've had the gray of the paper there. And that's going to make our values look a little bit lighter than they are in reality. So when we're getting some of these white tones or lighter tones on the surface, we can we can see that our values are, are, are pretty dark. So I'm going to go ahead and just finish this background, and then we'll put a little bit of shadow underneath it. Okay, so I've left enough room here for us to put a little bit of cast shadow down here. Now we want our shadow uh, to be a cooler gray, if possible, so that it can contrast a little bit with what we've got going on in the apple, which is mostly warm colors. So we're going to start here uh, with a, a bluish gray here, and we're just going to uh, basically frame out where our cast shadow is going to be here. And we'll go right underneath the apple there. And since our light source is coming from the left side, we're going to have our cast shadow on the right side. Right underneath the apple. Then as it transitions into the, the white that we've added back there, we're just going to use our finger and kind of ease that transition. So that's what happens to shadows as they extend out and they lose intensity. Let's go in there with another application. Make it a little bit darker, a little bit stronger, closer to the apple. And there we go. There's a, a quick little pastel sketch uh, using the pastel matte paper. I really, really love this paper. And I really, really love the painterly effect that it produces. And also um, the fact that as you're applying the material, it really feels like you're painting. It really gives you that feeling of a paintbrush. I can't describe it really any better than better than that. Uh, it's it, it doesn't give you the same kind of feel that you get from more heavy, heavier textured uh, or papers that have a little bit of a heavier tooth associated with it. This paper is definitely softer and you can feel it right from the start, start right from your first, first marks. And it carries over, even though we put additional layers over there with each, with each layer, it still had that soft buttery feel. It's a little bit of a pricey paper, but it's definitely going to be a part of the papers that I used moving forward for my pastel drawings, especially the ones where I need a little bit added control um, or the ones that I want to create more of a looser painterly feel. I know those things kind of seem a little bit contradictory, but uh, this, this surface definitely provides an interesting pastel painting experience. Now let's wrap things up by taking a look at the pros and cons. First for the pros, pastel matte paper layers easily. It also blends easily as well. Well, it blends with a little bit of force, but it gives you a lot of control over that blending. And part of that is because there's less dust that is released by the paper. It also works well with water because it's so rigid and doesn't wrinkle. 
It is expensive, however, and there is only one side of the paper that you can work on. And from what I can tell, there's less colors available compared to other manufacturers that are out there. If you enjoyed this video, then I know that you'll love some of the other pastel instructional videos that we've posted here on YouTube. You can check them out right now by clicking on the link on your screen. If you're new to this channel, I encourage you to subscribe so you can get access to all of the new videos that we post here in the future. And if you want to check out three of our course videos, which includes videos and eBooks for free, just click on the link in the description below this video. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.